fantasy. It's all TV. It's the villains of YouTube. What's up, guys? I'm Eli Wilbur. I'm Jessica Leach. And this is the Villains of YouTube. This week we have a special podcast for you because uh, last night was the mid-season premiere of The Walking Dead and the series premiere of Better Call Saul. So I'm very excited to talk about that and here to talk about those shows with me is my beautiful, wonderful girlfriend, Jessica Leach. Oh, wow, thank you. That's uh, really nice. Oh, you're, you're really <laughs> nice. Um, I, you know, this, this is who I watch most of my shows with anyway. So I decided that why not talk to her about these shows rather than, you know, a bunch of other people. Someone who I'm always watching the shows with, someone who I enjoy watching these shows with, my wonderful girlfriend. And she said, yes, she'll do that with me. So that's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, barely. Um, All right. <laughs> now, before we get started, uh, I I have a little little PSA for you guys. Um, last week, I applied for a job on Indeed.com. Now, I'm not here trying to discredit or or you know cause any financial harm to that company. Indeed has always proven to to you know provide jobs, and they've been great. However, I found a job posting on Indeed.com. It was a job for a production assistant uh, position with a company. I will not name the company because it is not the company's fault that this happened. What ended up happening was that an outside party was posing as this media company. And they posted this job posting. I applied. Um, ended up getting response back. Got really excited. Like this weekend, uh, it was a couple days ago, Saturday morning, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. got the post. Told her about it. She was excited. I was excited. It sounded like a wonderful opportunity. And as things progressed, I started to see some red flags. And unfortunately, um, you know, my bat senses went off and I said, hey, this doesn't seem right. This seems fishy to me. So I contacted the actual media company just to verify to make sure that this was an actual job opportunity. Turns out it was a scam. Um, so I just want to warn you guys that there are people out there who are going to do that. They are going to prey on people who are desperate for work, who are desperate to, to, to be, you know, to have a job. And, you know, some people are so desperate, they're not going to see those red flags. So I just want to yeah. point out what some of those red flags are. If you get a, you know, if you get a job offer or, or an email correspondence with anyone from a professional company, um, look out for spelling errors or grammatical errors or punctuation, anything like that, that is so unprofessional. And all professional media companies, they're going to have someone who knows what they're doing. They double check their work. They double check their emails. You should never see uh, that many spelling errors, grammatical errors, or anything like that on an email from a professional. Um, I also think that getting the email on a Saturday morning is kind of weird. It's a little weird. Just because, because Monday through Friday is seems business to hours. always be business hours. And I think it was Saturday morning at 8 a.m. Yes. That, which... that that should have been a red flag as well. Mm -hmm. um, also, anytime that a job you know says that they're going to send you a check, you take a cut and then send the rest to a, a travel agent or anything like that, that's money laundering, guys. Like... No, no professional company should ever need you to do their um, money transactions for them. Um, you know, unless it's that's part of your job. But other than that, uh, there is no reason for that to happen. That is money laundering in most in most cases. Mm -hmm. um, always check the email. You know, look at the email. At the end of the day, trust your gut. If something seems weird or or wrong, inspect everything. Look at the email address. If the email if the email address seems somewhat weird or off to you, um, you know all all professional companies they have a, a way that you can contact you know a general person, someone who will respond and tell you if you are in contact with the right person or not. Mm -hmm. So just do your dil you know be diligent, be be resourceful, use your resources, and if you feel that something is fishy or weird if you see a red flag trust your gut and and look into it because um there are people out there they will scan you and it it sucks you know this was a heartbreaking weekend simply because we thought that there was a great opportunity and it turns out it was fake um you know i contacted the actual media company got the you know 
got the lowdown from them, and it turns out it was a scam. So yeah, just wanted to put that out to you guys. If you're listening, if you're watching, um, and you are in the media business or, or any business, really, it, it can happen to anyone. Just be aware of that. Be on the lookout. Don't let it happen to you. And, uh, you know, it, unfortunately, we live in a day and age, especially this cyber age, kind of have to be skeptical of anything that seems too good to be true. So um, with that said, let's move on to a lighter note. Let's have some fun. Uh, first of all, mid-season premiere of The Walking Dead happened last night. That's not a lighter That's note. That's not a lighter <laughs> note, actually. What a <laughs> bummer. Um, what were your thoughts? Well, I liked how artistic it was. Um, but here's a bombshell for you. At this point in the Walking Dead series, I don't care who gets killed. I think yeah. I could even handle Rick or Michonne or some of my favorites getting killed. And mm -hmm. I would actually like to see that to shake it up a little bit more. I, I agree. I really do agree. Yeah. Because... At this point, it's the deaths that kind of make the show better in a yeah. way. Yeah, I want them to like send them off on a different path because, I mean, I either want them to get to Washington or I want them I want to find to a cure. I want the the mist to, to part its curtain and <laughs> like reality just kick back in. I just, I don't know. I'm not bored with it, but... I'm kind of just comfortable with the, it. The whole surviving thing is kind of getting played out in a way where they're just, they're going from place to place to survive. And it's, to me, I mean, I like seeing that, but I like seeing it in chunks. You know, it's like, I, 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 I need them to be, you know, just out there surviving for like a small amount of time. And then I need to see them comfortable for a little while. Because I personally, when they were in the prison mm -hmm. was when I really really liked the show because yeah. it was them establishing this society um you know seeing the difference between the prison and woodbury where woodbury was far more established and and things were really like things things were really good at woodbury but they had a amazingly they, they had a fucked up leader was the only problem yeah um and th I mean, and he had a good thing. He let his he let his vengeance get the best of him mm -hmm. was the problem. Yeah. And the thing at the prison was that the prison they were you know again they were just barely surviving. And once all, everyone from Woodbury came to the prison, mm -hmm. things were good. Yeah, it was humming. It was it was really good. Mm -hmm. But then you know that disease came in and wiped out like half the population of the prison. Yeah. And then the governor came back. Um, yeah. So, you know, it, it only goes to show that these guys, they, they can't stay in one place. And they can't, there's no such thing as security anymore. It's it's constantly, they got to constantly be moving around. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be someone who's going to want what they have. And that's the sad reality of this world that they live yeah. in. I um, know. I feel like it's taking a little too long just to get to Washington. Or I feel like they still all look really good for being out in the you know, depths of the wilderness for as long as they have. Like, how many properly fitting skinny jeans can any of these women <laughs> actually find in their size and inseam length? I mean, I'm just not buying it. Rick looks pretty spot on, but... Rick I, Rick is very believable. Rick and Daryl yeah. are, like, probably the two most believable just because, like, they always seem to be wearing something different and something really crappy for the most yeah. part. Yeah. Um, Rick's beard is just getting more and more epic. Mm -hmm. I know it's a fake beard. Look. Mm -hmm. I, I get it, but I don't care. It is an awesome, like, just lion's mane. I mean, that the, yeah. the, that one commercial, the one that you pointed Ugh, out to me, the, the slow-mo, slow -mo. when he's growling at the camera, essentially. Yeah. Like, oh. I love it. I it's, love it. I, I, I love Rick. I mean, I, and, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, if Daryl dies, I'm done watching the show. If Michonne dies, I'm done watching the show. And I, I absolutely disagree. You know, even if Rick were to die, I don't think Rick will die. I think the show dies with Rick. Yeah. Because he is the character that we start with. I don't... I, I think it, it's it, his story. I think that they, it, they would kill off Rick as a major just to, like, throw people off. Mm -hmm. But I don't think they'll do it. Because I think, I mean, he's the central character. He is the... He's the show, in my opinion. Yeah. I don't. I mean, I love. I love Daryl. I think the guy who plays Daryl is an incredible actor, and I love mm -hmm. him. But he's been almost absent. Yeah, you know. him and Carol have um, been. I mean, a lot of the people are so separate from each other right now that it's like, how are you staying in contact anymore in the zombie apocalypse? Yeah. I mean, they must have a really good, 
you know, plan B, plan C, plan D, mm -hmm. you know, and walkie talkies do help, but how are they charging them? I mean, there are so many questions. There are so I many just... questions that you kind of, you kind of want to go a little bit more in depth, but you, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, I, I, I had this Facebook argument with a friend of mine where it's just like, we we live in this you know in this day and age where like filmmakers and and TV you know TV showrunners are so they give us so much detail and they they make you know they they focus on realism so much to yeah. a point that we've almost become a little little spoiled mm -hmm. about you know at how how much realism we get from our films and TV shows and anything mm -hmm. where you know back you know you know maybe 10 15 years ago Films, you know, you were kind of expected to spend your your, I don't know, your your ability to 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 just imagine that like yes, this is possible, and then, yeah. And maybe um, they found a, a a house that still has power or a generator or something like that. You yeah. kind of just kind of have to like let that kind of just take over. Let mm -hmm. your your ability to just, you know. Spend your disbelief. What is it? Spend your thing of disbelief. There's a there's a saying to it <laughs> that I'm trying to find. And I can't think of it. That's okay. Um, which is uh, embarrassing, but that's fine. There, you know, there, there's a way for you to just be like, okay, you know, it. I, I can believe that. Yeah. The, 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 this is it, and, but sometimes you you know you do want those answers because in The Walking Dead it it, it it's very weird. You know, mm -hmm. like. The the way The Walking Dead is, is, it is so real that the you know the emotion is so real. I, there's so much about it that does just come off as very real that sometimes you're like, I don't, I don't see it. I don't see the you know the realism in this area or whatever. Yeah. Um, I like the show though. I think I, I love know. the show. It, it and the thing is, is there's a lot of people who hate the show. You know, like like who or who sure. have stopped. Who like who did really love the show and then all of a sudden stopped loving mm -hmm. the show for, for whatever reason? I think one of the things I have a friend who he his thing is he doesn't like how zombies have become uh, not as scary. They're not as big of a, of a threat anymore. Well, I think that makes sense for the show because honestly, like they're they are becoming less of a threat. They're more of a nuisance, mm -hmm. and I think that's true because. In the beginning, it was terrifying, and now it's just like, it's just a problem. You yeah, know? They're, they they're, it's more like an over, uh, they're more like like pests, you know? Yeah, like it's... mosquitoes. Like, you don't want to get bit by one, because you might get, what, Ebola or some other <laughs> scary Malaria, virus. Yeah, yeah, West Nile. Yeah, um, same idea. I don't know, that's a really good point. You know, it it's called The Walking Dead, because we're in a world where there is nothing but zombies. Mm -hmm. However... You know, in a world, I would hope that if we were to ever be overrun by zombies, those are the kind of zombies we get. The slow, not super powerful not zombies. Not the dawn of the dead. Zombies. Not the dawn of the dead zombies. I'd be out. Fuck that. Yeah, it's like, okay, let's go out together, babe. Yeah. Like, that That would be probably my answer Ugh. to it. Um, scary. But, you know, regular zombies, doable. Yeah. Uh, very doable. It's um, realistic, and I think The Walking Dead is also representing that some of them are kind of becoming just walking shells and walking dead versions of their the, old selves. Yeah. The like, show is not, to me, it's not about the zombies. Mm -hmm. It's about the people. Yeah. It's it's about the character. It's an ensemble show. You know, yes, Rick, to me, is the main character. Mm -hmm. He's the centerpiece. He's mm -hmm. the, essentially on the, you know, if you were to look at it as a chessboard, he's the king. He's the guy who, you're, you know, we're, we're all trying to protect him because he's keeping it all together mm -hmm. in a way. Um... The minute he falls down, though, oh, man, everyone's going to, you know, the whole game's over. That's yeah. the way I see it. Mm -hmm. And Rick, you know, but but Rick, you know, again, he's just one person. There's a whole ensemble that there are so all these characters that are so dynamic and they're so uh -huh. interesting. And then Michonne, mm -hmm. like she just every episode, I feel like she becomes more and more interesting and more dynamic. Like at first she seems kind of. Stone cold. Yeah. But then you start to realize she is a, she is human. She does have emotions. She just she's she keeps them in. Yeah. But now she's starting to show them. Now she's starting to voice her. And her opinion. and Carl. That's and her, cute. I love her relationship <laughs> with Carl. Um, but this episode was really hard to to get through because yeah. um, that you know, death scene. How it was beautiful. Just it was him beautiful. watching the fading sun. And Spoiler alerts! If you haven't, <laughs> if you have not 
watched Walking Dead or Better Call Saul, yet please stop watching right now and go watch, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, do whatever, however you watch TV shows on the internet, go do it, come back and listen to us talk about these shows because we're gonna we're gonna spoil shit. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna talk about who dies. We're gonna talk about who lives. We're gonna talk about all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So anyway, you were saying uh, Tyrese. Is... Tyrese, when he was dying, well, okay. First of all, at the beginning of the show, you think that they're burying Beth. Yes, um, I totally did. Oh, I mean, the, why not? That, That's they, how it ended last year. They showed a, that clip mm -hmm. that like just that. I mean, a very small clip at the beginning. Uh, or not at um, during Talking Dead mm -hmm. uh, during the the season mid season finale last year. Yeah, and so you know that was right after Beth had died. So mm -hmm. we were all assuming that that's what this was for, mm -hmm. and oh, really good misdirection. Yeah, really good misdirection. Beautiful. Um, yeah, and I I did like how he died, and I like how it showed, you know, him seeing everyone else who'd been, you know, killed along the way. I guess in his presence right everyone that was in that room well, all the dead see. people no technically the mayor or the governor i always call him the mayor mm -hmm. because sometimes i think of buffy and buffy there is a mayor character okay but the, the governor did not technically die in his presence i he think wasn't at Ty the prison? Well, he he was at the prison but tyrese was elsewhere tyrese yeah. was like dealing i think he was trying to save judith at that mm -hmm. point and the girls he was saving judith and the girls when I I believe the governor was killed. Okay. So, but he was he was there. He knew that the governor had died. Yeah. So I th so that wasn't his subconscious. So he had connections with all the people. Yes. If not direct connections to their death. The governor. Okay, so let's go through them because mm -hmm. there was. Who's that main chud at the beginning? Oh, the well, one what? who was in the shack. There. Yeah, the guy who who was going to kill Judith. Yes. That guy. Oh, I, can, I wish I could remember his name. I can't think of his name right now, but. He was, yeah. Tyrese, Tyrese was, was directly the, responsible for his death, right? No, um, his sister was. Okay. Because oh, yeah. because because yeah. uh, uh, in the shack, you were, we were led to believe that he had killed that guy, right? But he didn't because he can't. He can't kill anymore. Mm. He, Tyrese, Tyrese, you know, loses his ability to kill humans, yeah. um, and almost, I mean, almost his ability to kill zombies, but. But then, you know, he bring he, he gets that back, but then he mm -hmm. still can't kill humans. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that guy, but he did have a very f weird, you know, interaction with that guy. Mm -hmm. um, because that guy, for some reason, hated, I mean, of course he hated Tyrese, because Tyrese beat the shit out of him. <laughs> but he just had a vendetta towards Tyrese. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was, but Tyrese did watch his sister stab him to death in the yeah. church. And that was intense. That's good. Um, yes, that was good. And then Bob. Mm-hmm. Tyrese was the one to kill him. Yeah. You know, when he was turning. Yeah. Um, that was... That was hard. Bummer. That was... You know, and I, I mean, I, to be honest, I wasn't super affected by Bob's death. It sucked because Bob was kind of, uh, again, one of the shining rays of hope yeah. in the show. And if you're a shining ray of hope on the show... You're dead. You're done. You know, like <laughs> fucking uh, Herschel. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Bob. Yeah. Um, what's her name? Emily Kinney's Emily character. Kenny. Beth. Yeah, <laughs> Beth. Beth. Yeah. And then Tyrese, mm -hmm. you know, and, and now... Merle. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I still like Merle. I love Merle. I, I, Merle's a character who I thought didn't deserve to die. He's a son die. of a bitch, but I like uh, him. He's such a son of a bitch, but he's, <laughs> he was one of those characters you just, you're like, I want, I want to see, I want to see him... Interact with the rest of the characters, especially Michonne. I would have loved to have seen him and Michonne become friends. Yeah. That would have been awesome. I mean, there'd have to be some booze and pot involved oh, to, totally. get them to bury their hatchets, but <laughs> um, that'd be cute. And then the girls, the little girls, they were yeah. there. And Ugh. that, I mean, so someone pointed it out. I think it was. Was it Andrew Lincoln? Someone on they mentioned on Talking Dead that someone pointed out that Tyrese has been involved in two of the best episodes of yeah, that show. It was and that's the, the director guy. Oh the yeah. Um, God, uh, Nick Ataro. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. He uh, he mentioned yeah that it's uh, the the episode with the little girls where mm -hmm. they die, mm -hmm. and then this episode. Though I I agree, those are two of the best episodes. 
I didn't think that the Beth death, the Beth Beth's episode where she died. I didn't mm. think that was a great episode. I I liked it. It was a good episode. There were some really hardcore parts in it. Yeah. When Rick is running, and he slashes that zombie in the guts. Come oh, it's out, so good. And then he's chasing the cop and he runs him over and just killed him. Like, those, oh, yeah. those were some hardcore moments. But mm-hmm. overall, it was... I, I I find that I like the show for its just heart-wrenching moments. Mm-hmm. And those two episodes were the best just in far, as far as like heart-wrenching and just like message and artistic decisions. Mm-hmm. And I think stuff. that it made, it made me feel at peace with when characters die too because... So all those people were in the room with him when he was dying, when he was getting the zombie fever or whatever that's called. And then, you know, the rest of the crew came in and tried to, like, rescue him. Michonne, like, snaps off his arm with her machete. And then they carry him and help haul him out to the van. And then they're, like, rushing him to somewhere to, like, the rest of the crew. They're trying to get him back to the crew so they can cauterize. Yeah, cauterize and save and as they're doing that in the van, you know, you just see him, like, taking everything in and then fading out and looking at the sun and, like, the haze of the sky. And then it goes back into the van. And only the people who have died along the way that he really likes, which only is his Beth. Friends. Yeah. And Beth, the girls, and Bob. Yeah. They're in the van and they're just like, it's okay. Mm-hmm. It's okay. And then, you know, I mean, it didn't show him suffering. Right, but really, well, okay, right. it did show him suffering, but he was suffering, but he, he was kind of in shock and it just... was, yeah, I was okay with it. Like yeah. when it happened, like when that part, part happened, because the whole time, I mean, you're watching the show and you're just like, is he going to live? Is he not going to live? I thought he was. I thought uh, they were going to save him. When they cut off his arm, I was, I was very certain. I was like, okay, like they, they're there in time. It had been a while, and you saw that fever setting in, so oh, yeah. I felt like... There's so much blood. That's not good. Yeah, yeah, and I felt like he lost a lot of blood, um, but yeah, it was It, it was, was a, good. It was, a t- it was a tough set. It was one mm-hmm. of those things where you're watching it, and you're just like, the whole time, you're kind of anticipating, like, what's going to happen? Mm-hmm. How is this going to play out? I loved the return of all these characters. It was really cool mm-hmm. to see the governor again, because yeah. he's... He, I mean, really, he's the most fun character i would imagine to play and mm-hmm. to interact with is he's so just evil and fucking weird yeah that you're just like oh man i really i really like that guy mm-hmm. um and so it was really enjoyable to see him come back uh that piece of shit the guy you know the guy who almost killed judith mm-hmm. you know i'm sure he had a great time being back because the who gets you know no one I, yeah that's a scumbag right there like mm-hmm. and i'm sure it's probably a fun role to play mm-hmm. But everyone probably, you know, it probably also sucks because everyone hates your guts. You right. know, like I, that guy cannot walk down the street without someone throwing an egg at him, I imagine. Uh, <laughs> I mean, hopefully people know the difference. People know the difference, of course. You know, um, um, and then the girls, you know, the girls being back. Those girls are so creepy, though. They're so cute. I think they're cute. I mean, I don't the, like kids, but. There's the little one, the, the really young one. She's yeah. adorable. Yeah. It's the other one who. She was so creepy. Well, yeah. I mean, she was all into the zombies yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to ask about the look that Tyrese was giving the, all the photos of the twins before the twin came in to bite I him. I was surprised that that wasn't brought up on The Talking Dead. Like, I, I feel like he was just looking like, wait, there's one dead here in this bed. Where's the other one? Is the other one here? But then he looked really confused looked, and upset, and I just couldn't figure out why. And then he was bit by the other one, yeah. and then we forgot all about it. But that was a weird look that he was giving the picture. I agree. I thought I thought may you know maybe it was just a personal thing. Maybe it was him remembering his sister. Who I, knows? There, there's so much. You know, that was one thing I would have liked them to have explained a yeah. little bit on on you know the show after the talking dead. Yeah. Um, but they didn't. But they no, they didn't. <laughs> Um, and then the bodies, all the bottom halves outside the gate so of that community, and then all the front, yeah. all the top halves in the truck that Rick hit. Like, what the? That's part of the mystery <laughs> of the season. Is That's you know good. the show has been definitely there's been a lot of teasing towards this character Negan, who mm-hmm. is I guess in the you know we we're not the we don't follow the comic books. We just watch the show. Yeah. We don't follow the graphic novels. But I do know, you know, from online and all that, I do know that the show, um, 
does follow, you know, that this season especially, they've been kind of following the graphic novels a little bit more. They've been kind of pulling some things from that. The cannibals mm-hmm. at um, Terminus, that I believe that is from, we're not, maybe not Terminus itself, but the cannibals are there from the graphic novel. Okay. There's, you know, there's a lot of little, little things, not necessarily pulled directly at, as is, but mm-hmm. changed enough for the show. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole thing with what's his name? Um, the Cure, the guy who. Said, oh, the mullet. Yeah, mullet mm-hmm. man. He, you know, that's from the comics. Mm-hmm. That that like anyone who read the graphic novels, they knew that he didn't actually. Um, okay. Know the Cure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, this is allegedly this character. His name is Negan. He's gonna. He's probably the baddest villain. So far in mm-hmm. the graphic novel, they are they have announced a while ago that he's going to be in this season, and I think that's what this is leading up to. That's yeah. what this mystery is about. Because something was just not right with that. That was weird. Community. I mean, the fact was that it got torched, Mazel Tov cocktail, or whatever you said. Yeah, there was. If, if you look at the wine shots, there are some scorched. Built, you know, like mm-hmm. some of the buildings look scorched from mm-hmm. above, and it either looks like it was bombed or Molotov cocktailed or mm-hmm. something. Someone came in and, and caused some damage. I don't think it was overrun by zombies. Did I, I think... say Mazel Tov? I think I said Mazel Tov cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that too? No, you said that? it right. Okay. It's like, oh wait. Uh, <laughs> Mazel Tov cocktail. That's the new thing That's a now. new cocktail. Hashtag Mazel Tov cocktail, yeah. guys. Yeah. Uh, I want to <laughs> see that. Um, but no, uh, so... Yes, there is some ominous presence going about that. Who knows? I don't think it was overrun. I think that a human did what happened there, you know? Yeah. I think those, some of those people were killed or or let killed by the, the walkers by someone much more ominous, someone much yeah, darker. Yeah, because in the, the guy's house, Beth's, like, hospital mate, in his house, his mom was on the floor... Like, it looked like she was shot, right? It did look like she got and shot in the And then the kid the in the bed, he was shot, too. Yes. Just, I mean... But he was also eaten out. Of, he had chunks out of him, too. Mm-hmm. It was very weird. It was. And then there was a white guy in the house, a dead white guy yep. zombie, and then the dead... Who could have just... Who could have just wandered in? You know? Like, that, like that could have happened at any point between Noah leaving... Yeah. ...to go find others... And, you know, the yeah. someone just want, oh, a zombie could wander. But who knows? It's very, you know. Yeah. There, there are things that are kind of left for us to kind of wonder. And mm-hmm. it, like I said, it's part of the mystery of the season. Um, who knows? I mean, there's so much that it has yet to be mm-hmm. explained. Morgan. What the, what's up I with was where's Morgan? Ask, Where was Morgan this episode? I want Morgan to join the team. That's what I want. That's my wish. I'm almost wondering he might... Be, the last he might we saw be, Morgan, he, he was might be batshit. Negan. That's why I was What's about Morgan's to say. What's Morgan's last name? I can't remember. He was batshit crazy Maybe last time Negan. we saw him. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing with Negan in the comic books is that his character, he leads a gang. He leads a society of people. And this guy's super solo. Yeah. yeah. Um, the way Maybe now he... the way I understand Negan to work in the comic books is that he runs a society or a gang or something like mm-hmm. that. And that what they do is they like offer protection but you have to give them stuff it's kind of like but if you but if you don't take the protection then they fuck you up so just horrible people just like you know there are so many horrible people in the zombie apocalypse this guy's just going to be one of them um i just want rick to just keep killing people like at this point rick just needs to keep killing like i'm sorry i know a lot of people disagree with me on this um the priest should have died a long time ago that was yeah. a huge mistake to let him live. They should have taken his church and they should have killed him. I know that sounds fucked up because it's a church and all that. But he's caused more I, I mean, he's caused more harm than anything. Yeah. Like they had a church. They had a place to be. They had a place to, to live for a little while. And he screwed it all up. Yeah. And that's dangerous. Like you can't sit here and be like, oh, you know, what 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 classifies a dangerous person in the zombie apocalypse? Just about Anyone can be dangerous in the zombie apocalypse. Mm-hmm. Someone who's too scared to kill can be dangerous in the zombie apocalypse. Tyrese was was on that verge. That's why I think Tyrese had to die, was because he wasn't willing to kill when it was necessary. Yeah, they said the dead people were saying you have to pay your. You have bill. to pay the bill. Yeah, that was that was part of you know the the relationship between him and the 
governor was that he told the governor when he first came to Woodbury, because remember, they they originally were not welcomed at the prison. Mm-hmm. Rick was crazier when they yeah. first came about. And so they left. Yeah. And they went to Woodbury and uh, Tyree said, I'll do whatever it takes, you know, we'll do whatever it takes. And, but then he wasn't willing to fight and, you know, fight against the prison and all Mm -hmm. that stuff. And luckily it all worked out for Tyrese and them. But originally, um, you know, that pissed off the governor. He was not happy by that. So I think that was in his subconscious. You know, all these things were coming back as he was dying. He was remembering, you know, people who he did wrong or he had you know an experience with that kind of is leading to his death you yeah know? And, and the governor was one of the people who was unhappy with him and i think he was remembering that mm-hmm. you know and feeling maybe feeling a little guilty yeah. you know maybe i don't know it's hard to say but i'm not you know i'm not a writer i'm not i'm not that actor so yeah you know it's hard to say what he was feeling with that interaction but at the end he tells him off he he gives his rebuttal and it's powerful it's a, yeah it's a really good episode i i you know, I was on Twitter and Facebook and just kind of seeing people's reviews. And there were people who were making fun of the artistic choices and, like, the Instagram filters and all this stuff about, you know, how, like, things that they didn't... I, I sit there and I try to, like, critique and try to, like, agree with some of the stuff. I just can't. I can't be that big of a douchebag. No, like, Instagram it's... filters... These filters were here long before Instagram. Yeah, exactly. And it's just... You know, I've watched movies that look all blue to me. Right. And I stopped noticing after the first 30 seconds and it just sets the mood. So... They were just... You know, they were... They, they, it gave them the ability to be more artistic with this whole... You know, with the theme of this episode. Yeah. And the fact that we were following... One death with another death. It was it was to kind of just make you feel really uncomfortable and just to kind of like what's going on. Um, I overall I, I thought it was a great episode. It was definitely one of my favorite episodes. Mm-hmm. And look, if you don't like the show, you don't like the show. Like I don't understand how people can sit there and watch the show just to criticize it. Like stop yeah. watching the show if you don't like yeah. it. Stop watching it. I don't get that. But whatever. I mean, you know, haters gonna hate. Mm-hmm. Overall, it's groundbreaking, ah, and it's ah. still on the air. So it's still on there. It's still morning. beating out a lot of shows. It's still considered one of the best shows on television. But that's all going to change because Better Call Saul premiered last night. I love Better Call Saul. Now I love Saul and Breaking Bad, so the show can yeah. do no wrong. If you're unfamiliar, Better Call Saul is the spinoff to Breaking Bad. Now, if you've never seen Breaking Bad, you might still like Better Call Saul. I don't know. I love it. But he's, you should you should watch Breaking Bad. His delivery is just so good. And he's an incredible actor. Bob the Odenkirk casting is awesome. and the wardrobe and the set, it's all just so good. It's really great. The, oh. the, they did a really good job this the the series premiere. Um, tonight is episode two, so you know if I forgot. Yeah, so <laughs> I mean, we're, so we're going to be talking about the season premiere, but we will not be talking about episode two because it hasn't aired yet. So maybe we'll talk about it tomorrow or later this mm-hmm. week, but. We are only going to talk about episode one. If you're here, if you're, you know, wanting to hear more about episode two, mm-hmm. you know, stay, stay tuned. We'll probably put that out later. Mm-hmm. Um, but Better Call Saul, the spinoff to Breaking Bad. How does it open, babe? Uh, it opens in black and white, as all good openings should. And it shows Mr. Saul Goodman or whoever he's going by mm-hmm. at that point working at a Cinnabon. That I believe he owns that location, and he's in a mall in Nebraska, and uh, he is probably incognito. He's lost some hair. He's got a mustache. His he hair is miserable. all dark. He looks, he looks yeah. very sad. Oh God, I could see why, considering he's just so good at his job in the regular world of lawyering, and he's just getting by. And I believe that he made a comment like that either about himself or he made a suggestion to jesse or no it was it was what i believe is what he said yeah about himself he was gonna go do in the i think it's like either in the last episode or the second to last episode it's the second to last he says you know you know what yeah you're right i think it's the second to last Mm -hmm. episode it's when it's when walt is at the at the vacuum guys Mm -hmm. warehouse or whatever and he says 
you know, I'm not Saul Goodman anymore. I'm so and so, probably, you know, probably gonna live in Nebraska and own a Cinnabon. Like, yeah, he's he says done. something yeah. like that. That's if what he not says. That. That's what he says to yeah. Walt and to our like pleasant surprise. Because no one, I don't think anyone was expecting the show to do that. To, no. to start in the future of Breaking no, Bad and then chills. to go backwards. Love it. It was really just, it was a great opening because mm -hmm. it satisfied the fans. The mm -hmm. fans get to know what happens to mm -hmm. Saul in the future. Mm -hmm. And now we get to go back. And what I'm really hoping for, and I don't know, this may or may not happen, but what I'm really hoping for is more scenes like that throughout. Yeah. Um, it's very, it, that, would be, it. that would be very Breaking Bad, you know, very mm -hmm. much in the style of Breaking mm -hmm. Bad. And then we get to kind of see the parallels. Mm -hmm. and, um, maybe... You know, maybe we see some old friends come back in the future, and then we'll definitely be seeing some old friends from the past. Um, yeah, Mike is already there. Mike has made an appearance. But before yeah, we yeah. go on, I just have to talk about the opening even yeah, more. Yeah. So the whole opening is in black and white, and then it shows Saul getting off work and going home to his, you know, miserable little life and his miserable little what oh, his house condo. Seemed his house seemed really nice. Sure, it's Nebraska. He's probably living so large yeah. in Nebraska and also under the radar yes. at the same time. But he, you know, he's like watching TV. He's kind of bored. And then he he wants to, you know, I guess just revisit his past. Mm -hmm. And so he goes and digs under something, behind something. Very the Walter corner. White. It's very Walter White because he, yeah. he has to go in through a vent and yeah. he has his little box, mm -hmm. little box of... of the, his the past, past life, yeah. yeah. And then he pulls out a VHS, he pops it in, and then you watch him on in his like recliner watching the VHS, and in his glasses you see the reflection, and that's the only part that's in color. And you start hearing Saul Goodman's... <laughs> nope, <laughs> nope. You start hearing Saul Goodman's voice, you know, on a commercial, but for, you know, his lawyer services. But that's when you take a trip back in time where it's all in color. Yes. But I love that you could just see his commercial in the reflection of his glasses in color. That was yeah. like, okay, now we're going to go down the rabbit hole. Yeah. This it, it is so cool. good. Oh, it's so good. It was a, love that. a really great. And, and one thing you left out, I just want to touch mm -hmm. on it, is that um, when we're at the Cinnabon, mm -hmm. so he's looking around and he sees a big dude mm -hmm. who is... Um, who's watch, who he, he thinks is watching him. And it's okay. the same trick that they play in one of one of the last episodes of Breaking Bad when Jesse is supposed to meet Walt um, and he's got the wire with yeah. when he's working with Hank and Gomi mm -hmm. and he's supposed to go meet with Walt yeah. and he thinks that Walt has brought some muscle mm -hmm. who's going to whack him mm -hmm. when he goes to talk to Walt. Yep. And then, you know, then it's the whole, it's you find out that he no, he's just there. He's waiting for his kid. Yeah, and but he looks the really same, intimidating. Yeah, it's, he looks really intimidating, bald head and all that. Mm -hmm. They pull the same gag mm -hmm. in the Cinnabon. I like that because it's, yeah. it it just shows that like it's it's cookies for it, the way you put it. It's cookies for the audience. It's mm -hmm. like here, here's the you know you remember the show. You're loyal to the show. We want you to feel like this is yeah the same. We're giving you the same show essentially, but. Mm -hmm. Different, but oh, I think so I, honestly, I I think this show opened much stronger than Breaking Bad. I love Breaking Bad. Do not get me wrong. Yeah, I fucking love Breaking Bad. Oh yeah. But this because we've already been as, like exposed mm -hmm. to that world mm -hmm. and exposed to those characters. Mm -hmm. It's just it, it, it's it intensifies that satisfaction of like you get to see our old friends again. We get mm -hmm. to like and we get to see them. You know, we get to see Saul. And he's not Saul anymore. Like, at this point, he's Jimmy now. And Jimmy McCall. Jimmy McGill. McGill, And yeah. he has this relationship with this guy, Chuck, who is his dad or stepdad. It's hard to say because he doesn't he call him like dad. dad. He calls him Chuck. So it's mm -hmm. weird. It's really weird. It, I'm, I'm interested to see what that relationship is. Mm -hmm. um, and... Whoa. Maybe right. because... Saul's representing him as his lawyer. Maybe. So for that purpose and anything about that purpose, he calls him Chuck. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. And, and it's, it, that part is a little weird to me, but I mean, everything else is just very familiar. It feels very familiar. It feels yeah. very Breaking Bad. Um, well, every, every character is a strong character immediately. It yes. kind of reminds me of Napoleon Dynamite as mm -hmm. far as the colors and the 
blahness of everything and you just feel for all these people living in these lives of just ho-hum yeah. and every character is really interesting right away you mm -hmm. just it does remind me of napoleon dynamite as yeah. far as that but saul's just whatever his name is bob odenkirk is just so cute. He's, He's so theatrical. He's so, oh, my, like, I was, I was doing it the whole time mm -hmm. last night. I, I, even, like, before he said it, there's, you know, because you see it in the commercials. He's like, you will atone. Mm -hmm. Like, I love that part. I don't know why. Oh, it's I guess, so cute. I guess it's um, maybe part of it because it's from Network, which yeah. I really love that movie. Mm -hmm. But. Just like the way he does it. He's, he's just, just so, so theatrical and into mad. into his own thing. He's just doing it and he doesn't care yeah. if anybody else thinks he's a nut. He's like Dwight from The Office. Uh -huh. like, he's just, you know, frying, flying his freak flag high. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to say. Now, there were some Easter eggs I want. Because, you know, it, we Easter could, eggs. Yeah, Easter eggs. I call That's them what, cookies. Not cookies. Well, cookies too. I like uh, cookies. You know, I don't want to, like, do an entire breakdown of the show because, you know, like, their show, it, all, almost everything about it is great. It, mm -hmm. get, it does get slow a little bit when he's talking to his buddy Chuck. Again, we don't know uh, exactly what's up with that guy. He mm -hmm. seems to be maybe ill somehow. Saul feels like he needs to take care of this guy. Yeah. For some reason. We don't... It, that hasn't been fully established yet. Yeah. Um, and then it's Chuck... Who basically, you know, this is midway through the episode. He basically tells Saul or Jimmy, you need to establish your own identity, you mm -hmm. know, because um, McGill is the name of this big law, you know, this law firm who Chuck and Saul are uh, apparently against right now. Mm -hmm. And they're fighting against these guys. And it's Ham Hamlin, Hamlin, and McGill. Yeah. And, Mag and Hamlin tells uh, Chuck, you know, Jimmy needs to change his name because it could confuse people. They might think he's associated with Hamlin, Hamlin, and McGill. Mm -hmm. So um, that's kind of the what what drives the the name change. I'm assuming and mm -hmm. and Saul deciding to become a slimy lawyer. Mm -hmm. This is when you know before he's still a public defender, but he he seems to be doing things on the up and up, and he's trying to be a good lawyer to be a good lawyer. Yeah. But now but he's... But that's not paying the bills. That's not paying the bills. And so... And it's... It it, it, it definitely feels like breaking... Going back to Breaking Bad mm -hmm. and Walter White's situation. You know, Walter White, he he's, he was an up-and-up guy. He was a, um, a good citizen and mm -hmm. all that. And then he decided to break the law. He got the, the axe from Grey Matter and... Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, like, certain things led to him just deciding, screw it. I don't, yeah. I don't owe anyone anything and I'm going to do my own thing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's 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 really it's really cool to see those parallels. Saul and Walt have so much in common and Walt was so into himself that he didn't see it. He didn't get that. Right. And uh it's sad it's kinda sad. Like like go, like going back like watching this show and then kinda thinking back on Walter and how he treated Saul, it's really sad. You kinda yeah. go, Oh man, he really mistreated Saul when Saul was really his parallel. Right. Um but instead of, you know, instead of doing that whole breakdown, there were some Easter eggs that we kind of saw throughout the show to... Mike. There, Mike was one of the mm -hmm. number one. Now, Mike in Breaking Bad was the muscle of Gus, mm -hmm. Gus Fring. And to me, that tells me we're going to be seeing Gus very soon. Oh, I'm waiting. Point. I mean, they're going to um, go eat at his uh, at, Los Pueblos Hermanos. Yep, they're going to. Um, I love Gus is my favorite villain from Breaking Bad. <laughs> he is so badass. Yeah. He, I mean, he is, he becomes like the closest thing to like a super villain <laughs> that, you know, that we get in that show. Yeah. And, uh, it, Mike is his muscle and mm -hmm. I, we're, we can assume that he, Mike met Gus through Saul. Yeah. Um, because so far right now, all Mike is, is a toll toll booth guy he, mm. he sits there and he well tells, so we think i think he's you think he's already got plenty in, going on I and don't that's know. just I his think, day job i think he might be i this is my theory my theory is like maybe he's got one or two connections but right now that's all he is because he's working and, for like the court right the court yeah Which he works is for the court. state 
which is state. So they so, they keep an eye on you. Yeah. So I would imagine that's you know that's all he is right now. And mm-hmm. then it's going to be Saul because what Saul does later on in this episode is he starts recruiting people to be part of his illegal operations. Oh, and um, Huel is probably going to show up. I can't wait for Huel to come mm-hmm. in. But and his yeah. receptionist. And his, re- his bitch receptionist. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we you know we meet we meet Mike for the first time mm-hmm. you know pre Breaking Bad. Yeah. And. It's entertaining, and I'm assuming we'll be seeing more of him because mm-hmm. there's a preview that we have. There's a preview that they used to promote the show that we haven't seen in the show in the episode yet. Mm. So I'm assuming that'll be either episode two or maybe later. Yeah, I don't know. I hope but it's tonight. He seems to be a main character, so I think we'll be seeing I a lot more of him. I love his voice. I love him and his voice and his little face. Uh, he's great. He's I love that. Character. My favorite. Um, and then as. Now, there's a scene where Saul is driving. He's driving through a neighborhood, and that's when he oh. meets the two kids for the first time, the, the skateboarders. Yeah. And the skateboarders, one of them jumps out in front of his car, and that's kind of where it, everything starts to click for him of, oh, I should start being a slime ball, essentially. Yeah, because he used to when he was a kid. Yeah, he used to do that. Mm-hmm. And um, he then that neighborhood looks... Oddly familiar. Ugh, I'm looking for now, the white house. The whole time you're looking, I'm, I'm watching that scene, that whole scene. I'm like, I'm looking for the Aztec. I'm looking for Walter's yeah. Aztec. And I don't think I ever saw it. They probably drove by their house. But I guarantee that it. neighborhood looked very familiar. I guarantee That's all I they drove say. by their house. And yeah. there was no Aztec because Walter was at work at the or school. Or something, yeah. And I know they had to have. That's the same neighborhood, unless all New Mexico neighborhoods. All look New like Mexico that. looks the same, apparently. <laughs> yeah, which is true. I mean, all the neighborhoods here look the same. <laughs> um, you know, I was I was expecting. You know, you knowing that this takes place pre Breaking Bad and all that stuff. You, you're expecting to see things. You're expecting to see little things. So, but you don't really know what, and you don't right. know when, and it's just it's gonna just gonna be, be a surprise. Awesome. It's gonna be a little surprise. Um, another cool Easter egg. If you remember in Breaking Bad, when Saul is trying to, uh, he's trying to convince Walter and Jesse to start laundering their money. <laughs> yeah. And the nail he's, salon. he's pitching, he, he pitches it to Walt first, and then he pitches it to Jesse. He knows of a Jessie. nice little nail salon, I think he says. He know, yeah, I know of a nice little nail salon mm-hmm. and all this stuff, and he's really pitching it hard. I believe that that's the same nail salon that we see Jimmy uh, has his office in the back of mm-hmm. um, in this episode. And I thought I was very, I was really stoked for that. Yeah. You know, it was, it was just one of those things where you're like, that's why I love Vince Gilligan. That's why I love those filmmakers because every episode of Breaking Bad, oh, so much and thought even this, went into there's everything. there's so much thought. There's so much attention to detail. Mm-hmm. They, ne- I mean, I think there's one or two screw ups in Breaking Bad where they did screw up just because they liked the joke a little too much. There was the um, Osama the bin not Laden the, the Osama bin Laden joke where they made the joke where uh, supposedly the you know the timeline of the show was pre Osama bin Laden yeah. getting caught and they made a joke about Osama bin Laden getting caught. Mm-hmm. So, but I mean, it was a joke that they couldn't resist and they screwed up and they admitted it. Mm-hmm. But I think, I want to say that's the only really big one. I mean, anything else is probably minute. Um, yeah. They did a really, they do a really good job. Those guys just, they care so much about this world. Like it's, it's their baby. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. how can and you I not? And I love that. It, it's a magical show. It, the, a lot of great work is put into it. And I can't wait for episode two. I, yeah. Can you think of any other... I can't think of... It. Oh, and then at the end. At the end of the episode. Um, oh. You know, the, the, the plan gets Saul unraveled. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Saul, he, he sends out his boys, the, the skateboarder boys, to... Um, to, to try to finagle a client for Saul, and they end up either getting hit by the wrong car or something, and they're playing the wrong person. Uh, you, yeah. They find out that the woman driving the car isn't who Saul originally intended for them mm-hmm. to be um, huckstering. Mm-hmm. It's uh, Tia Salamanca. It's Tia Salamanca, <laughs> and it's uh, Tuco's uh, aunt or yeah, yeah. grandma or something. I think Tia's aunt. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and 
and so you know Saul he goes to find the boys he ends up finding the house and he knocks on the door and uh. he's like you know court of the or uh, officer of the law right and there you know a hand a very colorful sleeve pops out with mm-hmm. holding a gun mm-hmm. and I right away well actually when when the it was the you know little Mexican woman. She's like mijo mijo. I was, and like, I was like Salamanca. Yeah, yeah. I was like this. There's someone mm-hmm. familiar we're gonna mm-hmm. see, and then I see the sleeve. I'm like, it's Tuco. It's yeah. gotta be Tuco. Ah, and he Tuco. he pokes his little head out and closes the door, and it's it's Tuco. Ugh. So it was very exciting. It's it's I'm excited to see where the show goes. Yeah. So I think we're gonna keep you know we'll probably keep talking about mm-hmm. it. We'll probably keep podcasting about it. Um, you have. Anything to say, if you have any, anything you liked, anything you didn't like about the shows, let us know. Um, we'll talk about it, and we'll maybe, you know, maybe it'll change our minds. Maybe not. I don't know. Sure. <laughs> maybe, I'm open for discussion. Yeah, you know, it's always fun to, to hear different perspectives, and, you know, just because I think it's weird that people suddenly are falling out of love with The Walking Dead doesn't mean that, you know, you're not right, or, or that you're wrong, or anything like that. It just means that I don't get it. And, I'll, you know, explain it to me. Why don't you like Walking Dead? And if you don't like so, uh, Better Call Saul, I don't know. You are you probably just have no heart. <laughs> um, I love Better Call Saul. I'm, I, I love it so far. I'm really excited for tonight's episode of it. Also, Gotham is on tonight, so it's going to be, I mean... A lot of good TV happening. Our power better not go out. That's all <sighs> I have to say about that. Um, a lot of good TV is going on, so I mean, it's good. It's good time to have TV. That's all I can say. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's it. Yeah, that's all I've got to say. So until next week, guys. I'm Eli Wilbur. I'm Jess. And this is the villains of YouTube. We'll see you guys next time. Okay. Bye.